The IPL or Indian Premier League is a limited overs cricket league which hosts various international players and domestic Indian players. These players are pooled together to form eight teams which battle it out for a cash prize of $2.4 million and one of the highest honours in cricket, the IPL trophy. The second test match in full swing as Australia takes the field after lunch. Cricket historically has been a game which is played over five days, which today we know as the test match. Matter of fact is we stumbled and tripped into what is our definition of cricket today. Since the first limited overs game would not have happened between England and Australia in 1971 if the third game of the Ashes had not washed out completely. It is a splendid game. It's different to a test match or a state game. Uh, there's more involved. There's more tactical operations. There's more alertness in the field. A better running between the wickets. Generally, it's a spectacle. A spectacle. Two out of three games in the Ashes of '71 resulted in dull and stagnant draws, which caused frustration amongst cricket fans. Jenner, the batsman, and into that bat. Jenner is on the ground, and Illingworth is with him. In the but just how a fish jumped out of water, kick-starting years of evolution, rain this time evolved the game of cricket. The first one-day international game was a compromise. So, to appease the crowd and recover some of their losses, Australia and the MCC agreed to play a 40 overs a side exhibition. The first one-day international game was a compromise. A compromise between the cricket fraternity and the general public. It was played with the intention of something to watch. We didn't realise at the time what was going to happen, but obviously that was the first of any international one-day cricket. We went and bloody lost. <laughs> that match is now recognised as ODI number one. MCG catering staff at the time were told to prepare for a crowd of close to 20,000 patrons. 40 overs and 46,006 people later, a light bulb went off. Limited overs cricket internationally can be successful. The IPL and other cricket tournaments have a similar template, flashy and coloured jerseys, games played at night, the use of a side screen, and a white ball. We as fans are accustomed to seeing visual effects and graphics on our TV screens via broadcast. Things like varying camera angles, microphones to pick up differing sound effects. We are used to a more stylish and slick form of cricket. This template was provided by one man. Uh, so that was classic. At the end of the night, Scully, the greatest advice. Alan Jones says to Kerry Packett, what do you reckon, KP? You reckon they're, they're ready? <laughs> he goes, yeah, I reckon they're ready. So we listen, listen. He goes, boys, in this life, as long as you know who you are and your friends know who you are, the rest can go and get fucked. Kerry Packer. Packer, an Australian media tycoon and cricket fan. Well, I'm here looking at the cricket. Offered Cricket Australia, or then the Australian Cricket Board, $1.5 million for the broadcasting rights for his TV channel, Channel 9. In the system where the match goes simply to the highest bidder. Well, I tried that system and the ABC got him on a quarter of the price, didn't they? After losing the bid to ABC, which is the Federal Australian Broadcasting Channel, only because Cricket Australia felt a sense of loyalty to them, even though their deal was only 14% of what Packer was offering, Packer decided to form his own league called the World Series Cricket, a league where all of the world's best players come together and face each other. That sounds familiar, doesn't it? Packer's World Series Cricket played an ODI game, causing increased popularity of limited overs cricket while simultaneously proving that limited overs cricket can be financially viable and that players can make a career from cricket. England all out for 194 or 51 overs 
and they've lost their last eight wickets for 11 runs. So West Indies have won by 92 runs and deserve to become holders of the Prudential World Cup for the second time. Tremendous jubilation by the many West Indian supporters. There goes the cup. West Indies have won the second Benson and Hedges World Series Cup final by eight wickets. They take the cup, having won the first match in Melbourne on Sunday by two runs in a thrilling encounter. Great batting from Greenwich and Richards for this crowd of 20,840 people. An underarm. We haven't believed it. And that's a disappointing finish. Disappointed Brian affecting the crowd boom. And it's all over. Pioneer. Victory for the West Indian side. Fine performance by the world champions in limited over cricket. It's been a great series. Today, um, you played magnificently, wickets and runs. Have you been happy with the way you've performed in the one-day competition this year? Oh yes, I think, you know, especially in the finals, you know. That's life, you know. I think we're human beings and, you know, it goes to show you that we can fail as well, you know. So, you know, you just got to try and keep your head up and keep going. And probably someday, if you're a good enough player, it will come. Fast forward seven years. And that's out. Yes, it's all over this time. And India had won the ODI Cricket World Cup of 1983. Tremendous victory. And they've beaten West Indies twice. They've beaten Australia. They've beaten England. And uh, an observation here for a couple there to receive the trophy. A tremendous performance by this Indian side. After BCCI president then NKP Salve was disrespected by the English cricket board and was refused two passes for the final game, a fire of bringing the World Cup to India had been born. At this stage, only England had the resources to host the World Cup, and a time-old tradition that needed some shaking up was born. The titan that is known as the BCCI today was once a humble and meagre man asking for two passes to a cricket match for him and his wife to enjoy. After all of India saw 11 men bring the World Cup home, it's safe to say that the nation had tasted blood. On the 25th of June, cricket changed. Indian cricket changed. India changed. The hype of the win caused rapid growth within India of things such as coaching centers and states and zonal based cricket academies like Delhi. This also saw Indian media cover cricket far more than it was before. Additionally, the National Cricket Academy or the NCA, a staple for things like rehab and training, even seen today, was formed. A new India had started to bloom, a new psyche, a more resilient India came with Kapil Dev's men. A younger generation of players, which include legends of the game like Sachin Tendulkar and Rahul Dravid, wanted to pick a bat up and play the sport. And I always back myself to do well. But to end up as the highest scorer in the World Cup, I think I did surprise myself there. The 1987 World Cup held outside of England was one of the sports most successful. Picked up on the deep cover boundary by Valletta. They take two and listen to the acclaim to be cheered by 90,000 spectators at Eden Gardens, Calcutta. And take your first World Cup. That is Australia's joy and England's misery. I'm not sure if misery is the right word because this match has been played in tremendous spirit. Not a financial success, but it allowed for people to dream of a decolonized version of cricket, one that every nation could call theirs. The BCCI had entered a period of financial turmoil from this World Cup and other games. India saving grace? Broadcast TV. It's funny, the comfort of the television evolved and even saved the sport more than once. Before 1993, the BCCI needed to pay India's national broadcaster, Doordarshan, to air their games. This however changed when in 1993, the board for the first time sold their rights to Transworld International, now forcing Doordarshan to pay. This deal made the BCCI close to $600,000 and reduced the financial strains on them as an organization. The control of England and Australia over cricket had started to slip. 
Multiple parties in broadcast now recognize that tournaments can be financially lucrative, with the BCCI signing an $11 million deal per year with Doordarshan for the rights of airing Indian cricket. All of this critical and financial success allowed the BCCI to lay the roots what the IPL is today. One of the largest aspects about the IPL is how lucrative it can be for all parties associated, especially broadcast. This would not have been the case if India had not won the 1983 World Cup. And the IPL simply would not have been a reality if not for the class of 83. You just described it. You said it goes on for seven days straight with no points and no goals. That sounds like a torture camp to me. <laughs> Tell me which other game in the world lasts for five days and can result without a winner. Which game's shortened version lasts eight hours? More importantly, who can take five days off or even a whole day off to watch a sports match? An elitist, boring and long running game were the chief complaints of the public when marketing executive Stuart Robertson was doing market research as to why English viewership was dropping from watching county cricket. He found three key items in his unprecedented research. One, cricket was viewed as a sport for the wealthy and therefore some younger people also viewed it as a sport for old people. It took too long to finish and three, and this was the most key finding, that the game gets boring when batsmen only take singles and doubles, a highly normalized style of playing in ODI from the 15th to 45th overs. Robertson had to come up with something. What if we remove the 15th to 45th overs? All of a sudden, a three hour format of the game was proposed, a more metro man and woman format. Robertson, I dare say, humanized cricket. In 2003, a solution which was proposed to save English viewership of domestic county cricket was now being played at the highest level, with New Zealand and Australia playing the first ever international T20 match. Both parties did not take it seriously, with the Australian captain at the time, Ricky Ponting, on record mentioning that T20 cricket is going to be a great promotional tool for 50 over cricket. There was an overwhelming understanding that T20 cricket is never going to be taken seriously. Funnily enough, the world's largest consumer of T20 cricket, India, even refused to play the format because they believed it would dilute the value of their 50 over game. Nidanjan Shah once famously asked, T20, why not 10-10 or 5-5 or 1-1? India will never play T20 cricket. India and other nations who were against T20 only agreed to a World Cup of it under the stipulation that participation in it was not mandatory. Around the same time, India and other Asian nations were starting to bid for the rights to host the ODI World Cups of 2011 and 2015. Shockingly, their bids were rejected due to them being non-compliant at the time. Ehsan Mani, ICC president, gave them another opportunity to put in compliant bids if the Asian nations agreed to play the inaugural T20 World Cup. India sheepishly went into the World Cup with a brand new squad, with big names such as Tendulkar, Ganguly and Dravid not being involved in the tournament. The Indian side was led by new low-key wicketkeeper batsman, a player whose leadership abilities had not yet been proven. In the air, Srijan takes it! India win! MS Dhoni No one expected it, but the stars lined up for the BCCI again. India, to everyone's surprise, won a World Cup after 24 years. India, the world TT champions. India's low-key wicketkeeper batsman proved his tactical prowess and became a bona fide superstar of Indian cricket. Once again, people had tasted blood, this time for the newer format. This was something people wanted more. They found it explosive and exciting, and it became a sensation in India, to say the least. Tonight is, it's India. India has won the World Cup, and now we're on top of the world today. We have defeated Pakistan, our old rivals, and there's nothing like defeating Pakistan and getting the World Cup back home. India! The BCCI had to act, and act fast, because a new private league by Z Entertainment called the Indian Cricket League, which was perfectly poised to take the hype and attention which all T20 cricket was being given at the time, was ready to go. 
the BCCI had to accept that the black sheep of their cricketing family, the T20 format, was their moneymaker. And on the 13th of September 2007, the IPL was born. TLF Indian Premier League pesh karte hai cricket ka karm yud. Aat teamo ke beech tu aat thar padai. The young and ambitious vice president, whose brainchild the IPL is, was appointed as its chairman and commissioner. I see no reason why it shouldn't be bigger than the Premiership uh, in, the, in the very near future. If you actually calculate what a Mahendra Singh Dhoni gets uh, or, or Andrew Simon gets for, a, for playing for a week, Simon you know, gets close to over £100,000 a week to play for the IPL. I think there are very few English uh, Premier League players in the world that get £100,000 a week to play for the English Premier League. Let's see how Lalit Modi changed cricket forever. Lalit Modi, a master marketer and businessman in July of 2007, sat down with Andrew Wildblood of IMG in a Chelsea hotel and changed cricket forever. They both were planning an innovative cricket league which was unique and different from anything which had preceded it before. Modi brought in his own experience from his university days from the United States of America, where he saw and became a fan of American football. Displays of extravagant crowds, loud music, announcers and cheerleaders were all something he wanted in his own league. In 96, Modi had actually proposed a similar concept of an intercity ODI cricket tournament, but was shot down by the BCCI. Modi understood the daunting task he had in front of him. He needed to use the sport to cut across all diverse populations which are found in India. There were three tiers of an audience which Modi and the BCCI wanted in their viewership three specific groups of non-customers which they targeted. Tier 1, which were cricket fans. These were fans who already watched the sport, but how are they non-customers? They become non-customers when you are not actively subscribing to every single game of the tournament or of the sport. For example, not watching the rest of the tournament once India has lost a game. Tier 2, women and children. This is a demographic of non-customers who are simply turned off by the sport. Turned off for various reasons such as the length, the rules and the lack of entertainment. They are non-customers because they simply do not want to watch the sport because of the strings which are attached to it. Tier 3. The international audience. The third and final tier of non-customers which Modi was targeting was the international audience. Why would an Australian want to watch some Indian domestic T20 league? To achieve dramatic growth, Modi assessed major international sports leagues such as the NFL and the English Premier League. Wildblood later stated, We try to create an event in the image of modern India. Dynamic, colourful, noisy, excitable. Modi and Wildblood wanted to create a league which was international in its audience and approach, but at heart, Indian. Questions were raised. How is the IPL going to differentiate itself between a swarm of already existing T20 leagues? both domestically and internationally. To differentiate and to also cater to the three tiers of non-customers, Modi puts in place a few of the strategies that are used even today. 1. Get the best talent To immediately get people interested in the IPL, top international talent was sought out. In other T20 participating leagues, parties and players were local talent. The BCCI took this format and flipped it on its head. With its masterstroke, the IPL was able to gain global outreach immediately. International audiences such as Australia were instantaneously hooked as there were opportunities of watching players like Adam Gilchrist. That's a slower ball and that has gone my Glenn McGrath and even a near-retired Shane Warne. This accompanied with a player auction was something which India and the cricketing fraternity had not seen before, causing immense interest as any combination of players was possible. Indian legends at the time like Gavaskar and Farooq Engineer were appointed as officials. The IPL felt like a cricket fan's dream. All the best players, past, present and future, all at the same place at the same time, battling it out. The BCCI had made their cricket players gladiators, fighting in their own coliseum, Eden Gardens. Reason 2. Modi made sure everyone was rich. 
One of the reasons the IPL creates so much hype is because of how much the payers and other associated parties are played. This compensation also comes and brings the best talent from all corners of the globe, which is a breath of fresh air compared to what the stereotype of cricket is at the time of not being paid well. When the IPL debuted, Modi made four pay bans, $100,000 to $400,000 in USD. Modi was ready to pay all $20 million to the 100 players which he had signed at the time, and this is still a staple of the sport today, with this year's tournament being one of the highest ever recorded for player fees. Reason 3 Modi made the best talent in the sport rich, and now also worked on making sure that he could monetize every single aspect of the IPL to ensure that this talent and the BCCI's golden goose was continuously getting paid. With monetization, Modi made sure all parts and all teams can make their own money. Wait, that's not right. That's got a nice ring to it. Everything from the broadcast to the teams themselves was sold off to generate revenue. The broadcast of this tournament was sold to World Sports Group for nearly $1 billion USD before the start of the tournament even. Teams were sold off to Indian financial behemoths such as the Ambani and Goenka families and global superstars like Shah Rukh Khan and Preeti Zinta. The sale of the teams generated USD $723 million and this was single-handedly due to Modi but in my opinion what is so truly special about this is when all of this happened. As Modi was able to sell $723 million worth of teams three months after the 2008 financial crisis. The franchise auction was an incredible day and people forget the investments of hundreds of millions of dollars were being made on the basis of a 30 page prospectus three months after the financial crash, said Manoj Padale, co owner of Rajasthan Royals. Reason 4. The IPL is undoubtedly linked with the Indian film industry in Mumbai. This, when the tournament was starting off, was not a strong connection, rather a planned arrangement by Modi. Other stars of the industry created promotional videos for the league, with some coming even to watch the games to generate ambiance and increase the popularity of the games by getting stars. Modi knew a lot of these stars personally and ensured that cameras were on them at all times making sure people saw the visual of these actors supporting their favorite teams. The fifth and the most basic reason that the IPL is a success was because of how good the cricket was. It was rarely a bad game because of the caliber of players and staff which was present. This was the best versus the best supported by the best. There was no B-grade competition here. Men were fighting for their own glory and the glory of their teams. What I'm going to do is just give you the latest episode of India's, maybe the world's longest running soap opera, which is cricket, and may it run forever because it gives people like me a living. It's got everything that you'd want a normal soap opera to want. It's got love, joy, happiness, sadness, tears, laughter, lots of deceit. And like all good soaps, it jumps 20 years when the audience interest changes. And that's exactly what cricket has done. It's jumped 20 years into a 20 over game. The IPL is cricket's greatest tournaments, and it is clear why. With an ever-changing formula to keep it fresh, the IPL blends perfectly the history of the sport and bridges while it's also acting as a catalyst for what the future is going to be. The IPL is a standard in India and what all budding players aspire to reach. On the IPL trophy, there is an inscription, Yatra Pratibha Avsara Prapnati, coming from the Sanskrit language, which means where talent meets opportunity, a motto which every young cricket player all around the world has internalized. A motto which giants of the game stay fit and ready to defend for every single day. A motto which the BCCI has internalized into every single cricket fan.